What's up everyone? Good morning. I'm back out here at the farm ponds today. Just do a little bit of fun fishing. Uh, kind of change it up. Been throwing the big baits a lot lately. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't even know if all those videos have made it out yet. But uh, I have been focusing a lot on the big baits and having a great time doing it. But uh, I just saw a comment the other day on the monster bass video and a guy was asking me exactly what I was doing with the drop shot and I went out fishing with my buddy Jason the other night too and we were talking about how I was working the drop shot and just doing some night fishing and tore it up didn't take any cameras just wanted to fish and uh, he was talking to me about that and I figured you know what I might as well go back out to the farm ponds and kind of break it down a little bit and show the why talk about the how and what I do with these drop shots and these pawns is just a little bit different than your typical drop shot rig or drop shot fishing and then hopefully just do some regular old fishing. I brought a few rods with me, I brought a good vary of lures and uh, very, a good variety. I varied my lures, you know what I'm saying, but I kind of missed that, uh, that early morning that I wanted to, woke up just a little bit late. But we're going to get out there, put the GoPro on my chest, take you all along with me. Hopefully we'll keep this big camera rolling for some of it too. And uh, see if we can't have some more fun like we did last time we were here. Got it. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh! Oh my gosh! It's a whale! 9-11. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, so we're gonna start with the honesty train here i did i probably didn't come up with this but i first discovered this in this pond because i know you can't see it right now but the grass out here there's about a six foot stretch maybe where the grass is not too thick and then it's just choking a choking amount of grass and the way that i knew to throw a drop shot was to slowly drag or hop traditional drop shot now what i got on here this is a decoy i don't remember the name of it but it is an easy snap on right there for your weight line it is a one aught and i got a ghost ice hazardong shad on there now my go-to drop shot baits would be the hazardong shad when i'm doing this style this swimming style the hazardong or the beast coast magic flick now when i figured this out again it was getting bit already we got a little bass chasing right there you got like your own it's like your own depth finder if you will with that drop shot on there and then swimming it so you're able to put it out there and then as soon as that hits the water i'm closing that bail and i'm starting my retrieve process that weight is going to be dragging through the grass better. I'm going to be able to feel that grass and I can keep that bait up above the grass and keep that bait just moving nice and parallel like a little bait fish just swimming through with no issue. Got another bass chasing right there. Now sometimes when I'm doing that depending on the grass is I'll give it a little twitch say like the magic flick. The Magic Flick doesn't have a paddle tail like your Hazadong Shad does. And it's got a whole lot of action as you give it the action. Hazadong Shad doesn't require much of a flick, twitch, anything like that. You can just do a straight retrieve with that. And as you bring it through there, you got lots of little bass chasing after them right now. But your weight is going to come back with a little bit of grass on it. But we're keeping that hook clear is what we're doing now jason asked me why not just a uh, a small exposed jig head why not just swim the jig head and again what that weight is allowing me to do it's allowing me to feel the bottom feel the grass and know where that con that bottom contact is so i'm keeping that bait above the bottom contact without snagging that hook up on like say a small exposed swim jig head I'm not having to worry about that at all. Now, one thing that can definitely throw you off is when that weight 
is dragging, you can feel like you're getting bites. And a lot of the time when I get a bite bite, I will kill that retrieve and really just let that fish take that and tell me that it's got it rather than see how my rod's dipping down like that. That's my weight dragging on the bottom. So I'm gonna give it a little pop up like that right there. And this is just a seven foot medium rod. Very fast tip on it too. So by just giving that tip, a little tick of a tip right there, a little rod tick up, it's keeping that weight off the bottom, keeping it from getting snagged up and keeping that swim bait moving parallel like I want it to, just like a little bait fish cruising through, minding his own business, want, not wanting to get hung up. Now it's not flawless, as you can see here. It is not flawless. We got tail on the top there. You're gonna catch some grass. Base your leader line, your weight leader line, off the depth of the grass too. But that's why a lot of the time when I'm putting it out there, I'm closing that bale immediately and bringing that thing back as soon as it hits the water because it's gonna drop pretty fast. Now this drop shot weight, I just remembered, this is a little bit heavier than I normally go. For these ponds, I like a 1 8 ounce. And I just remembered I got a quarter ounce on there right now. So I'll be swapping that out. Now a lot of the time, I won't worry about grass that's down on the weight. If I do pull it off, it's just because my OCD is, you know, killing me. But a lot of time I won't worry about that. I just want to get back in there as soon as possible and start getting on those fish. I'm trying to get the trigger those bites. Now my favorite color of Hazadong for pond fishing, and I said I was never gonna share this secret, but I'm gonna share it with you guys, is the green pumpkin shad. The green pumpkin shad Hazadong from Mega Bass is a dead ringer for a baby bass. You put that thing in the water and it is just, I mean, it is perfect. It is a perfect little baby bass imitator and I do believe I've got some of those on there or in my bag as well I just had this crystal one on here right now trying to show you guys it in the water so we don't have enough sunlight just yet to really showcase that so I may just go ahead and switch over to a green pumpkin shad so here's the green pumpkin shad just nose hook right below or right behind the eye right there now the other night when i was out with jason i didn't have these little uh three inchers with me all i had were the 4.2 inchers and the 4.2 quite a bit bigger but it seemed to provide a much bigger bite now unfortunately mega bass baits <laughs> they are a great bait extremely soft but they do tear up pretty quick that's a good bite right there and those little uh those little 4.2 inches on the hook that i had i was not using this decoy hook with that wider gap on there had a uh a smaller gammy gamakatsu gamagatsu gamakatsu had one of those hooks on there and had some of the smaller fish just thrash so much that it just ripped the bait completely off of there. Now, I wish I had some of those 4.2 inches today, but what I have close enough to that is the new Magic Flick 4.5 inch. I got it in a black neon. And we're going to throw that on here pretty soon, too. This little pond was not really the drop shot pond. This pond is great for a uh, Texas rig Senko. Wacky rig was great, but this was not the one that I uh, really killed it on the drop shot. So we're going to make our way over to that one here pretty soon. We've gotten some bites though, so I'd kind of like to see if we can pick maybe, maybe one off before we get out of here and move on to another one that's over that way. Yeah, 
there we go. Oh, we lost him. We lost him. I just should have set that just a little bit harder there. That's all right. That's a good sign of life. See if we can find them again. There he is. There he is. Yeah. I tell you guys, that green pumpkin shad. corner of the mouth a decoy hook just stuck him move that shad that little bait right out of the way living in that grass darker guy pretty little guy thank you sir so I'm probably gonna be reiterating myself or repeating myself quite a bit today and that's just for you know the folks that might be kind of skipping around a little bit but again as soon as I'm casting this bait out there I am immediately closing the bale and starting the retrieve process because what I want to do is I want to keep that hook out of the water or out of the grass and keep that weight kind of dragging through the grass. So as soon as that hits the water, I'm closing that bale and starting that retrieve right there. As soon as I feel a little bit of a tick of the grass, I'm going to take that rod up, just kind of lift it, give a little pop right there and just get right back to it now i'm throwing this on a 2500 Daiwa fuego and this is the 6.3 gear ratio so it's a little bit faster my other spinning reel that i was doing this on is a 1000 size acceler five gear ratio so it's quite a bit slower so sometimes i have to remind myself with this faster speed reel to slow it down a little bit get that down there keep it down there but not too low down there as soon as that hits the water closing that bale and starting that retrieve process there we go got another one got another one through my bait through my bait now like I had said earlier as soon as I feel that bite, I'm going to kill it and really let them just kind of take that and get back after it. Now another killer little color here. I believe this is Morocco. Morocco. It's kind of like a baby crappie. Kind of like that ghost shad or that crystal shad with a little bit of a speckled back. I know there's crappie in this one. So I'm curious to see if a little baby crappie imitator gets the same kind of reaction as that uh, green pumpkin shad. Like I said, that green pumpkin shad is a dead ringer for baby bass. But with there being crappie in here, maybe, they, maybe they're gonna key in on some crappie. So doing the drop shot technique like this in grassy ponds is just a great way to really know the depth of the grass and where it varies because this pond the grass is not the same depth all the way across where i'm casting out here right now it's a little bit deeper it's not as shallow and as soon as i feel that weight kind of dragging in there i'm able to keep that bait up out of there and again this is where it kind of comes into play and is a little more handy than <laughs> a little more handy than say an exposed swim jig head because you're not finding out where the grass is with that exposed hook. You're finding out where that grass is with your weight and you're keeping that bait up above that grass and right above where they're looking up because they're hanging out in that grass and they're just looking up, waiting for a meal to come by. And this is gonna allow you to keep that up out of there without getting hung up and without alerting them that you got something with a, uh, a sticky point on the end and then it's actually baked. 
All right, one last tip before we really just kind of get down and buckle down to fishing. You do not, you do not, you do not want to retrieve this too fast. Because especially on that little bait, you can get that thing just swirling around in a circle and looking nothing natural. bass right there. Oh my golly. Holy cow. Why'd you have to do that? I was going for the bass. Come on. Dang, son. Whew. Before I was so rudely interrupted, I had a bass cruising in right there and that guy just blew that thing out of the water. He blew that little hazadong completely out. That bass might be down here though. Might be able to find it down there. There we are. There we go. That'll work. No, not again. Not again. Oh, and you tore my bait. And my bait's way over on the other side. Oh, <laughs> you didn't tear my bait. You just had it in your, in your belly. Look at him. He is pretty. Hey. At least didn't tear my bait off. I have to walk all the way back over there. Because I'm lazy. And it's freaking hot. That's the right species, just not the right size. <clears throat> A little quick release there. Did you guys see that? Did you guys see that? Did you guys see that? I hope you did. Oh, I hope you did. I hope you guys saw that. I hope the camera picked that up. Because he just came out of that grass and just blew it up. That's a chunker. Little but chunky. Thank you, buddy. Heck yeah. That was awesome. That was awesome. So what I'm doing now, because the grass is so thick down here, is I'm popping this thing almost top water, working it somewhat like a fluke. And when I'm giving that erratic action, it is just triggering, triggering some strikes. There we go, that's another big gill right there. Changed up the bait too. Guys, will see this guy hit the old magic flick. And that's that special black neon 420 something or another. <laughs> it's their California 20, the California 420. Heat's getting to me. Words are getting hard. And you guys remember me talking about the magic flick. It doesn't have a tail to it. So you got to give it a little action. Got to give that rod just a little bit of action to get some of the, uh, the flash and the, what's the word I'm looking for? Flick out of it. But this is by far one of my favorite drop shot baits. Much more durable. A little more versatile as well. There we are. Oh man. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, you got some spunk. You got some fight to you, don't you? Yeah, buddy. Hey. 
Heck yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're little, but you got fight. And that's what counts. Boom. Boom. Boom sauce. Yeah. Come up. Come up and give us a show. Boom sauce. Heck yeah, son. Thank you for that. Corner of the mooth. Mm, mm, mm. You are pretty little, but pretty. And all kinds of fight. I'm telling you guys, it's just too much fun. If you're not drop shotting like this in ponds, you got to. It is just, I mean, it's so fun. It's just a different style. A whole different style of fishing and just a freaking blast. A freaking blast. Hey, we were able to pick one up on a wacky rig. There's a bigger one chasing him right now. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I wish I could get that one. Oh, I wish I could get that one. Oh man, I wish I could get that one. Oh man, that's a better one with him. You guys seeing this? Look at him. Look at that one chasing this one. Man. Man. Dad gum, that was a better one. This guy is fat. What are you eating? He's got some, he's got a little bluegill in his gullet right there. Yep. Blue Gilly's trying to spit up. You keep that in there, you get big, okay? Man, that was a bigger one. I'm trying to take it away from him. My other rods are down there, else I would have tried to throw another bait in there to catch that other one. Whoo! That was, that was still some pretty cool footage. Man, that was cool. Bigger one's back. Bigger one is cruising right out that way. Come and pick this up. Come and pick this up. Come on now. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Yeah, we got him. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, we got him. <laughs> Holy crap. How sick was that? Oh, how sick was that? Holy cow. Oh. Give me your face. Oh, how freaking sick was that? Oh my gosh. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> guys that was sick look at this one look at him sorry i was showing the rod <laughs> halo ks2 elite 610 medium 1000 size reel literally just this is the one that was chasing that little one that i just caught and i saw her cruising thought she might be interested i cast in front of her want to go for where she was heading towards ah oh. yeah heck yeah 
that's the freaking way to end the day. I'm done. Guys, it is entirely too hot. It's got to be close to 97 now. Um, it's getting kind of hard to breathe, you know. I am uh, extremely dehydrated. I need to get back to the vehicle. I need to get some cool air. Get some fluids in me. I left my water in the car. Yeah, the real feel is 95. Hey, get get out of here, little spider. Oh, guys, I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. Doing something different, trying to answer some questions on, you know, the drop shot technique in ponds, how I was doing it, and then the equipment that I was using. I will link it below. I'll try and link some Amazon links because the Amazon links do help me out and it does help the channel out. That worm, if you guys are still wondering about these worms, that's the quarter worm. So again, the quarter worm has got an anti-rip patch in there. Let me pull some of this grass away here. But it's got an anti-rip patch in there that keeps that wacky rig perfect and keeps it from ripping up as well. So, <clears throat> I'll put their link in the description as well. Code OWA15 saves you money. It does help me out as well, which therefore helps the channel and helps me do videos like this. And hopefully we can keep doing more and keep growing. Oh, man. I hope I covered everything I wanted to today. That's it. I'm done. It's too hot. <clears throat> it is too hot. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Thank you for the support. Thank you for helping this channel grow more and more. Just keep doing it. Keep sharing. Hit the thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button for me. I'll see you next time on the water.